Good morning and welcome to our online service on Sunday the 28th of March 2021. Today, as many of you will be aware, is Palm Sunday. We begin our journey to the cross once again. We would like to invite you to join with us for an online Good Friday meeting. We'll be sharing with our friends from Bristol Citadel and Bristol South. Please look out for the link on our Facebook page. Well, I love this time of year. I especially love to see the daffodils as we walk or drive around. I also love to have a bunch of daffodils in the house. They seem to brighten the room up somewhat. I decided to look up the meaning of the daffodil and this is what I found. A daffodil flower represents eternal life in Christianity. One reason for this is that daffodils are perennial flowers, so they appear year after year. In addition, daffodils are one of the first flowers to appear in spring, which is representative of rebirth, a process that we as Christians believe happens during the afterlife. This makes sense as we often see daffodils taking centre stage in any flower displays in church at Easter. And so as we turn our thoughts towards Easter once again, let us give thanks because we know the truth about where we receive our eternal life from. But we must not rush towards the cross. So let us return to today, Palm Sunday, and our first song. A great reminder to us of Jesus riding into Jerusalem as we sing, Make way. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. King splendor arise, fling wide the gates and welcome thee into your lives. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let His kingdom in. He comes the broken hearts to heal the you all enjoyed seeing and listening to the singing company last week. It took Mark a long time to put it all together, but I'm sure you'll agree that it was definitely worth it. Their item for today is another favourite of mine. I hope you enjoy it too, as they sing for us, King of Heaven. Yeah. 
voice with praise, King of heaven. You're so awesome, I'm amazed that you even notice me. I wish you great times, I'm the champion with you in my life. Our Bible reading today is taken from Luke chapter 19 and verses 28 to 44. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying that colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. We ask God's blessing upon his word. Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome and praise you this day. We lift up our voices in glad hosannas. We joyfully acknowledge you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yet we know in our hearts, even as we greet you, sincere though we may be, that our worship and commitment is sometimes as weak and shallow as that which greeted you as you entered Jerusalem long ago. Lord, forgive us that we go on making those same mistakes made on that first Palm Sunday. Perhaps we do profess to follow you, but in our hearts, follow our own inclinations. We might be self-centred in our discipleship, looking as much for what we can receive as give. We might be ready to serve when life is good, but reluctant when it involves the way of sacrifice. Lord Jesus, you knew as you entered Jerusalem that the welcome of the crowd would turn to rejection. Yet still you came and still you died for them. We praise you for that truth. And we thank you that still you come to us, inviting us to respond and share in your kingdom. Come again now into our hearts. Cleanse us of all that might be impure and unworthy all that keeps us from you. Lord, come to this, your church. Fill it with your love, with harmony, with humility and faith. Lord, come into your world. It so much need you just now. Enter in, bless it with peace, justice, freedom and hope. Lord Jesus, we welcome you today as the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Servant of All, the Lord of All, all in all. 
Son of David, have mercy upon us. For your name's sake. Amen. The first Palm Sunday when Jesus rode into Jerusalem was a time of great celebration. Of course, the crowd that day did not realise exactly what they were celebrating. As we think about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem again today, let us celebrate because we know and have a reason to celebrate. As a band play for us, fill the world with glory. Let us join our praises with theirs. Thank God for Jesus and commit to do our part to help in God's mission. This is a no-brainer. We do exactly what Jesus said. We go into town, we find the donkey with its coat. I we just don't understand it. why Jesus wants us to commit a crime. He wants us to steal a donkey. No, no, not steal, borrow. Oh, so we're just supposed to stroll into town, untie the donkey and... And say exactly what he said to say. Oh, what is it? Oh, that the Lord has need of it? Yes, and we'll return it. What does that even mean, the Lord has need of it? It's self-explanatory. Why are you being so, so... So, so, so me? Because you all know that I'm the rule follower of the bunch. I just don't know why Jesus just didn't ask Peter to do this. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. This is so up Peter's alley. Steal the donkey, cause an uproar, that's his thing. Peter is the reason why banks chain their pens. Oh, I just don't want to go to jail. You know I hate one-ply toilet paper. I lower your voice. Look, we're just going to do what Jesus says. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst? 
course that can happen. I don't know, a cracked rib, a busted lip, the kind of name calling that'll put you in therapy years down the road. Stop it! Stop whining! Stop talking! Stop everything! Stop freaking out! Um, I, I, I don't mean to be judgy here, but someone needs to get the log out of their own eye. You have trust issues. Serious trust issues. You even know how many germs are in a jail cell, do you? No, 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 I don't, I don't. I'm sure it's a whole lot, okay? I don't know. And I don't know why Jesus wants us to get a donkey, and I don't know why people are gathering branches over here and lining the streets, but it just seems like there's something big is about to happen. Wait a minute. Yeah. Go back. Why did you say I had trust issues? Okay. Okay, let's make it about you. What? Think about it. Since we've been following him, we've seen him give sight to the blind. He's healed people with leprosy. He's raised people from the dead. From the dead? I can't even raise you from a nap. Hey, I think we can trust him with this donkey issue. That just did. I have trust issues. I see how Jesus trusts the Father. He trusts so much, even more than the ground that I'm standing on. To trust someone like that, I, I, I just can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah. But if you're gonna trust someone, it's him, right? Oh. Okay, all right, let's do it. We got this. Huh? You first. Baby steps. Hey, when we get there and we grab said donkey, maybe I really should leave like a Benjamin. No. A 20 spot? No. A thank you card. Stop it. All right, I'll trust him. Palm Sunday is one of those days of the Christian calendar where we seem to reserve uh, specific songs for that particular day. Although this song we're going to sing now could, I, I guess, and is often sung on other days, uh, but it's very apposite for Palm Sunday. I hope you'll all be joining in singing out loud your own praises to Hosanna in the Highest. For the songs to write in today, I have chosen a well-known song but with a newer tune. It's much more reflective and I hope you'll perhaps hear the words afresh as international staff songsters sing for us, A Light Came Out of Darkness.
There's a story about a king in the Bible. The crowds were waving and cheering, but he didn't have fine clothes or servants to boss around. He had great power, and he used his power for the good of his people. He fed them and healed them. He wasn't rich. In fact, he was poor. He didn't have a horse. He had a donkey. No fine clothes and no crown. But the people didn't care. They knew he was a true king, a loving, kind king, a servant king. They cheered, they sang, they waved palm branches, a wonderful king, the king of kings, King Jesus. Many of us have heard this story many, many times. We could probably recite the story without thinking too much about it. For some, it is just another stepping stone in the Easter story. Let us know it is only a week until celebration time, which means chocolate eggs. But for a few moments today, I want us to stop and look again at this story, to examine the reaction of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, to examine the reactions of the Pharisees and the crowd that gathered, and perhaps most importantly of all, to examine our own reaction if Jesus were to enter wherever we find ourselves today. We know how Jesus' disciples obtained the donkey. We know how they put their own coats over its back so Jesus could be more comfortable when he rode it. We know how the crowds lining the road into Jerusalem shouted and chanted, proclaiming him as their king. We might have expected Jesus to be happy, to look down upon the people and smile. But instead, as he approached Jerusalem, he weeps. From the descent of the Mount of Olives, there is a magnificent view of Jerusalem with the whole of the city fully displayed. As Jesus came to a turn in the road, he stopped and he wept over Jerusalem. I think Jesus' tears were partly because he knew in his heart that the people who were calling out in joyous voices didn't really want him to be the sort of king he actually was. The people wanted this great miracle worker, this king, to come into Jerusalem and use his great powers to clear out the Romans, the political powers. But they didn't want him to change their religious situation. Jesus prophesied that exactly the opposite of what the people wanted to happen would happen. They wanted him to throw out the Romans from their religious institution. In fact, their religious power would be crushed by the very political power they wanted Jesus to remove. And so Jesus wept because he knew that the hearts of most of the people in the crowd did not want to accept him for the Messiah King he really was. The people there saw a thriving religious center. Jesus saw religious show, pride, arrogance, hearts that needed to repent. And so he wept for the people and he wept for the city of Jerusalem itself as he knew what was going to happen to this once magnificent city. The Jews were even then embarking upon that career of political maneuver and intrigue which ended in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 when the city was so devastated that a plow was drawn across the midst of it. The tragedy was that if only they had abandoned their dreams of political power and taken the way of Christ, it need never have happened. So Jesus' tears in the midst of all the celebration are worth noting, as only he could see what was behind their actions. For the people coming to Jerusalem, this was a time of celebration. In Jerusalem, expectations were running high, for the priests and religious leaders, it was a time of celebrating the Passover and possibly they might at last get their hands on the one person who was being a real pain to them, Jesus. For the ordinary people too, the Passover was a time of celebration, but their expectations were even higher than normal. They had seen and heard all of the things that Jesus had done recently, and they'd heard of his being referred to as the son of David, this term was a title which the Jewish people understood to mean the messianic king, a new ruler who would liberate his people from foreign rule. 
And so all the evidence pointed to something exceptional, something of the utmost importance. And we know how the crowds gathered, how they shouted and called out to Jesus. It's easy, isn't it, to be part of a crowd, cheering the hero. But if the hero doesn't perform as expected, crowds can easily turn their support to opposition. The reaction of the crowd was a reaction based on the presumption that Jesus was going to do something dramatic to turn their world upside down. He did. But what Jesus did was not what the crowds who gathered on this day wanted. The Pharisees, of course, were beside themselves with what they saw happening in front of their eyes. They knew Jesus was going to be trouble, and now it was happening right in front of them. They didn't like the fact that the people were praising God for all the miracles they had seen. The Pharisees felt threatened. They were the religious leaders, and yet the people were listening to someone else, someone who seemingly had power and authority. So they tried to silence him and his followers. But instead, Jesus said to them, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. We hear no more from the Pharisees that day, but this scene was, I think, for them the last straw. Jesus had to go. Now all they had to figure out was how to do it. And so we come to thinking about our own reaction to Jesus. Do we really want Jesus to be our king? He will almost certainly not do what we expect him to do. We can't manipulate him for our own ends, either as individuals or as a church. Do we really want him to enter our lives and our church as king this Palm Sunday? He might need to turn the tables on us. We could react towards him as the Pharisees did, by asking him to be quiet, not to talk to us. We don't want to hear what he has to say. We want to control Jesus, not have Jesus control us. We could react towards him as the crowd did. On the outside, they sounded like they wanted Jesus, but they wanted him to do what they wanted. When he chose a different way, they immediately turned against him and wanted nothing more to do with him. Are we like that? When Jesus doesn't do things the way we think they should be done, do we turn away and decide to have nothing more to do with him? Or we can react in a totally different way, a way not displayed all those years ago. We can choose to let Jesus into our lives and into our church, knowing that he might change us, but acknowledging the change is what we need. It's easy to carry a palm branch. It's not so easy to carry a cross. So which way is each one of us going to choose today? It has to be our individual choice. We can't choose as part of a crowd because Jesus knows our individual hearts. To aid our thinking, I'm going to use a meditation. Perhaps for these next few moments, you would like to close your eyes and listen. And as you listen, make your choice today. As one, we meet together in our worship. As one, we join together in your name. As one, we say amen to all presented. As one, we get up and go home again. As one, the people battled just to see him. As one, they called and shouted out his name. As one, they reached for palm leaves from the treetops. As one, they all got up and went home again. As one, the people clamoured for his torture. As one, the people shouted, crucify. As one, the people reached for stones to club him. As one, the people stood and watched him die. Did those crowds simply follow one another? Did those people really know the king they claimed? As they dumped their coats and lined the road before him, did they do it because the others did the same? And are we also like-minded worshippers today, 
thronging to the latest battle cry. As we worship, do we know the king we claim? Do we know the one we follow? And do we know why? As one, let's choose to walk the path his way. As one, let's recognize the plan he holds. As one, let's dump desires to follow crowds. As one, let's serve together and alone. Let's pray together. Gracious God, as we remember this day how Jesus entered Jerusalem to cries of celebration, help us to welcome him afresh into our own hearts and lives. Accept the praise and worship we bring you and give us a real sense of expectation as we look towards his coming kingdom. Gracious God, like your people long ago, we do not always see clearly. Our faith shallow and self-centered. We do not understand as we should, our praise short-lived and superficial. But we ask, take the faith we offer, weak though it may be, and deepen it through this day, so that we may truly welcome Jesus as our King and worship him with joyful praises now and always. Hosanna to the Son of David, glory in the highest heaven now and always. Amen. For our final song today, we're turning to I Stand Amazed in the Presence. The chorus reflects how we should all feel because of the new eternal life we have received through Jesus' sacrifice. How marvellous, 
how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. I pray that you will each be blessed this week as we journey to the cross, so that on Sunday we can rejoice and sing because we know how much our Father God loves us. God bless you each one during this holy week. Singing how marvelous, how wonderful and